Breakpoints in programming help developers debug code by stopping its execution at specific points of interest. This makes it easier to explore certain conditions in a portion of code that could be causing a bug or need to be improved. Breakpoints are commonly used while debugging and are often symbolized by a red circle next to the margin. Hi, I'm Victor. Let's take a look at the different variations of breakpoints in VS Code today on height above sea level. If you're not familiar with VS Code and how to set everything up here and the colors, changing the theme, writing your methods, enabling sticky scroll, I have a video called VS Code for Beginners. I will link to the top right of your screen. We'll be covering a bit of debugging using this debug window. So that's also included in the VS Code for Beginners video. Speaking of debugging, if you're curious about debugging in Visual Studio, the IDE, I also have a video on that. I will link to the top right of your screen. All right, let's get started with this video on breakpoints. Now, we have a method here called double even numbers, even though it triples odd numbers, but all it does is it checks if the numbers dot length or the numbers array, this array that I'm passing in is empty. If it is, we return, we don't do anything. But if not, we'll loop through all the numbers. If the current number is even, we double it. If it's odd, we triple it. So we'll triple one, double two, triple three, double four, and so on and so forth. But back to the issue of breakpoints, we're going to start with the regular breakpoint. A regular breakpoint stops execution where you place it. And in terms of placement, you should prefer to place them on a line like this and don't place them on the empty space like in line number five. So how do you place them? You can see this red here. It's very faded out, but you can see it. You can either click on it like that. You can put your cursor on line number two or whatever line you want to put that breakpoint on. Come up here, run, toggle breakpoint like that you see it showed up and click on it to remove it or if you like the keyboard you can press f9 f9 again to toggle it and that will toggle it on and off all right so why don't we look at the regular breakpoint over here it's going to stop execution over here if the numbers array is empty so for now let's remove all the numbers here like that save it and then we're going to run the debugger if you want to run the debugger come over here Press this green triangle, and right now I'm using the Node.js debugger, so if you're having trouble, select Node.js and run current file. And you can run it that way. You can also run it by going to run, start debugging, or you can press F5. I'm gonna click here for now, but I'll use it other ways just to show you what it's like. It's the same thing, but I just want you to see it for yourself. So I'll click here. Remember, the array is empty, so we should hit this break, but let me put it here instead. So I want us to be inside here. So if I click this, see we hit it. And why did we hit here? Because this evaluated to true numbers that length is less than one. The array, the total items in the array is less than one. So now we're here and you can even check numbers. Length is equals to zero. Is zero less than one? Yes. So we come into this code block. And if I step over with up here or F10, again, if you're not familiar with the debugger, that's in the VS Code for Beginners video, I talk about that. I'll step over. That's going to return from this method, which means we get out of this method. F10 again. Step over. You see, we're out of the method. We don't execute this because of the return statement. And I can stop debugging with Shift plus F5 or click this red square, which means stop. And that right there is a regular breakpoint. But something you should know about breakpoints also is you can disable them. But before I do that, you'll go back to this tab in the sidebar. Come down here to breakpoints. As you can see, this sample.js breakpoint is the same as this one. And I can toggle it on and off from here to disable it. Or I can come here and say disable breakpoint. So why would you disable a breakpoint? Let's say you had a couple of other ones in here or in here and another one in here. Let's say you don't want to hit this breakpoint and you want to look at these two. But at the same time, you want to keep this here so that next time you can debug from here. But for now, maybe you just want to look at these two so you can disable it rather than remove it. You can disable it like this right clicking or you can come here check this box at the bottom left under the breakpoints drop down and also i haven't mentioned this watch window so if you want to watch a variable let's say we hit this breakpoint and you want to watch the numbers variable you want to see what's going on with the numbers variable that we pass you can come to watch type that and there you have it you can watch the numbers variable let me let me run it this way with we'll run start debugging we'll hit this because i haven't changed the array it's empty so now we can look at the numbers variable. There's nothing inside it. 
and I can remove that. So that's how you enable or disable a regular breakpoint and how you apply them. Also, all breakpoints are applied the same way, but this is just to show you how you do it with that regular breakpoint. And I can click on it to remove it. Click on it again to remove it. Just a heads up, if you're enjoying the content, please consider supporting the channenel over at patreon.com forward slash high to above sea level. On Patreon, there are advanced C Sharp videos, game dev content, tips and tricks on using VS Code and Visual Studio, and all patrons get a custom Sakura theme as a thank you for your support. So if you'd like to see those videos and get the custom Sakura theme, go over to patreon.com forward slash high to above sea level, and I'll be very grateful for all your support. Thank you so much. Next up, we have the log point. The log point is an interesting one because often when you're debugging let's say you want to know if we ever make it into this code block so what normally people do is and what you probably might have done is you go in here you type console.log and we say something like this method got hold maybe we don't want to stop execution we just want to know if this method got called and this is what normally happens is you put a console.log statement and then maybe if this method deals with another method or works with another method you also put another console.log, like let's say here as well. And you keep doing this, you put this in another method and another one, and it just bloats up your code. And in the end, you'll have to keep deleting them. And if you're working with the repository, you'll have to undo all your changes and it gets tedious. So an easier way to do all this is instead of putting a console.log statement, you can log to the console without writing console.log. Here's how. First, I'll open the panel with control plus J down there. And I'm going to right click this and I'm going to add a log point. So what message do you want to log? This method got called. If that's all you wanted to see, you want to see the method got called and maybe you can say something more specific. The double even numbers method got called. That's a little more specific in case you have this log point in many different places. And then you just press enter. And there you have it, you have a log point. Now, if you start the debug session, this time I'm going to press F5. Execution won't stop. The log point does not stop execution. It just logs to the console. So if you have a log point, keep that in mind. It won't stop execution. It'll just log to the console when it gets to here. And that's it. So run the debug session with F5. The double even numbers method got called. And why is this? Because remember again, the array is empty. There's nothing in the array. So its length is zero. So if the numbers dot length is less than one, you get to here. And this is very helpful. Maybe you have a database, a database of people, and you get no people in the array. And if you want to see if you get into this method or into this code block, then we can say this method got called, or we can say the numbers array is empty, and so on and so forth. You can also log to the console variables. Let's say, let me remove this by clicking on it. It asks you if you're sure what you want to do next. I'll just remove it. Or... An easier way is just to press F9, but I'll remove it that way. Let's say I wanted to log the numbers variable once we get to this point. So let's use, um, let's add some numbers here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So let's say before we get to the loop, we want to log the total items in the numbers array. So I can come here, right click, add a log point. So if you want to log the numbers variable, you can say total items in the array. Then I can put curly braces and then I'll say numbers. You can see IntelliSense is also helping me out so I can know what variable I want to put. If I had other variables in here, like maybe a constant that I want to log to the console, I can use that by pushing it inside curly braces. So I'm gonna press tab to complete that for me. And then I'll say numbers dot length because I just want to know how many items are in the array. I press enter. There you have it. And then if I debug again, this time I'll use this one, clicking the triangle, the green triangle, and keep your eye on the console. Run it. Total items in the array is five, remember? One, two, three, four, five. There are five items in the array. I log to the console, the numbers variable. You can also do that at a log point here and log the current number, the numbers.length, and whatever other variables that you want to log in here. And that there is the log point. You can also disable it. Disable it this way. This drop down on the bottom left. Disable it. Enable it. And that there is the log point. Let me remove it with F9. 
Up next is the conditional breakpoint. Like the name suggests, this is a breakpoint that is only hit after a certain condition. First thing we're going to look at in the conditional breakpoint is an expression. So if I click here, I can add a conditional breakpoint. I can say, what do you want it to be the expression? What must be true for this expression to be hit? Before that, let's look at what we have. We have one, two, three, four, five. Let's say I wanted to put a breakpoint here that's hit only when the current number that we're looking at out of all these is four. So I can put a breakpoint here, click, right click, add conditional breakpoint. I can say current number, the, var the variable, current number. And you see IntelliSense is there to help me out. So I can say current number, tab, is equals to four. And what's going to happen is that when you get to four, is when we'll stop execution. We won't stop execution at one or two or three. We'll stop execution at four. Why don't we see this in action? Let me click here to open this. And I'm gonna click here to start the debug session. So we stopped execution with the current number is equals to four. And now we are at five. As you can see, one is an odd number. So it was tripled. Two is an even number. So it was doubled as and you can see from down here. Three is an odd number tripled and four is an even number it was doubled so now we are at five so at this point we'll be on five we just finished with four and now we're on five i know it's a bit confusing but but that's just how it works we're done with four so now we're looking at five that is the expression why don't we look at another one let me end the debug session there the other conditional breakpoint we can look at is hit count so i'm going to remove this with f9 so I'm going to put another breakpoint here and the hit count is actually one of my favorite because if you have a loop with many items, you can stop the loop and investigate an item at a particular loop cycle. So let's add a couple more items here. So we can say six, seven, eight, nine. Let me just add a couple more here. So I've just added a couple numbers here. So instead of one to five, I've now added 20 items into this array. And we're going to look at the hit count breakpoint. Like I said, the hit count, we can stop the execution on a particular cycle or a particular iteration of the loop. Let's say we had a problem with this 19th item. Instead of putting a break, a regular breakpoint here, we'll have to step over all this code 18 times before we get to 19. And that is very tedious. And if you had like, 50 items and we want to look at the 45th item that'll be a very very tedious debug session but it's an easier way and we can do this using the hit count breakpoint so just like before right click conditional breakpoint and click on this drop down it's going to give us the hit count so i'm going to put a number 19. this is going to stop the execution when you get to 19 it's going to get hit one two three four seven eight nine ten whatever up to 18 but on the 19th time this gets hit, we're going to stop. And let's look at this on the sidebar. Okay, so I'm going to press F5 to start the debug session. Right now it's saying 18 because that was the previous one. And we haven't gone over this line just yet. But I promise you we're in the 19th cycle. This is just confusing you for a second. If I press 10, the current number is 19. As you can see, the current number now is 19. We're in the 19th cycle. And you see, we can now look at what's going on with number 19. And if you had a bunch of code inside this for loop, we can start right here, skip all this because we already have a hunch that this is what's causing the problem and that there is a hit count. Let me stop the debug session. We can also, you can also adjust the hit count to be greater than a certain number, less than a certain number. So let's say, let me edit this. We can say greater than 10. So if you're not sure the total number or let's say the first half of all these numbers, everything is fine and we want to start at 11. So we can put that breakpoint there, set the hit count. Even if you hover over this, it'll show you the tooltip that says hit count is greater than 10. If I run the debug session and now if I press up 10, current number will be 11. So now we're looking at this second half because we know the first half is good to go. Same, same thing. Let me stop the debug session. Same thing you can do. The edit breakpoint, you can say less than a number. Then I'm just going to start at the first one because this is the first number that's less than 10. Right? Debug. 
10, correct number is 1, 1 is the first number. That there is the hit count. One of my favorite, if you want to debug loops and go to a certain cycle, you can use a hit count conditional breakpoint. Finally, we have the triggered breakpoint. Now, a triggered breakpoint works in such a way that it's only enabled once another breakpoint is hit. So let's look at this. Let me remove this with F9. And this is great for failure scenarios. So let's say I have a breakpoint here. And I only want us to hit this breakpoint that, sh that should be up on this line when we get to here. So I can right click and put a triggered breakpoint and say, wait for which breakpoint to be hit before becoming enabled. This breakpoint at line 16, and it gives me a preview. You can see line 16 down here. I can wait for that breakpoint to be hit. And then this one will be hit. So if we debug this session with, let me use up here, run, start debugging. Look at what's going to happen. We got to this breakpoint first, this one. And we didn't hit this one because this only is enabled when this one is hit. So now that this one is hit, you can see it's red like this, which means it's now enabled because we hit this breakpoint. And now in the next cycle, we can hit this one. This is enabled now. As you can even see this inline breakpoint, but it's because we've set this one to be a conditional breakpoint. Only enable it when another breakpoint is hit. And that right there are the different breakpoints in VS Code. We've looked at the regular breakpoint, the log point, the conditional breakpoint, and the triggered breakpoint. Let me stop this. If you want to remove all breakpoints, you can come over here, run, enable all breakpoints, disable them, that disables everything, or again, run. Remove all breakpoints, that removes all the breakpoints. And that right there are the different types of breakpoints in VS Code. That's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something about breakpoints in VS Code. And you can debug better now that you know all these other breakpoints and how to use them. And you'll be a better programmer overall. But if not, let me know in the comments below what questions you have. And, and let me know if I went too fast, if I went too slow, if there's something I missed or you have some special information about breakpoints you can share with the community. And leave that in the comments below. Again, if you want to support the channel, please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com for slash height above sea level and you'll get a custom sakura theme as a thank you for your support as a discord server you can ask all your questions in the c shop channel whether that's just for c shop or game development you can just ask your questions there and i will get to them as soon as i can but if you want a more interactive experience then i do plan on getting back to streaming on twitch so follow twitch.tv forward slash avatar vic for when i go live again that's in the works but that's all i have for you guys thank you so much for watching and as always from me to you deuces